there. I am Diane Simmons from Cape Connection in Jackson, Michigan. And tonight we are going to make some 4th of July goodies, some different snacks and quick treats for your parties and cookouts and bonfires and whatever you got going. Okay. So we are going to jump right in. I've got a few different things I want to show you. Um, we're going to be working with chocolate and we're going to cover some marshmallows, do some different things. I made up one concoction that got a huge thumbs up from my son. So hopefully you guys will find some interest in that too. But let's jump right in. So first thing we're going to do is some red, white, and blue marshmallows. Okay. And this is something, honestly, you could do this with the kids. It's it's a super, it'd be a fun little project with them. And they would think it was just neat. So, to decorate a marshmallow on its own, obviously if you take some sanding sugar or something, it is not going to stick. Okay? So we have to mix it, or I'm sorry, we have to wet it in order for it to adhere the sanding sugar or I get whatever you want to put on, okay? I'm going to be using sanding sugar with it tonight, but you can certainly do other things too, okay? So, you can do just plain water to dip it into. Um, I actually, I did about a 50-50 mix. I put some coffee syrup in. So this is white chocolate flavored, okay? Just to give it a little, just a little more flavor to it, basically. You don't have to, again, you can just use water. It's no problem. All right, and I've just mixed that together in my cup here. So, just taking a toothpick, all right? Let me get my bowl over here ready. Let me get my sugar ready. All right, so, Darren, you need to zoom it down. Just a minute, we'll get our camera boys zooming in here. I got Darren back behind the wheel tonight. All right, so we're just gonna dunk this in real quick. Okay, you don't wanna leave it in there very long. All right, just enough, quickly get it wet. And then you can just sprinkle on your sugar. Okay, and put it up on the top too. All right, so there is just a basic And this is just some styrofoam from the craft store, okay? And I'm just putting that in there for a little bit until it starts to dry some, okay? If I went to pick it up right now, well, I can't show you. I might pick it up, okay. Well, no, it's gonna come off on your fingers and stuff and make a mess. Okay, so another thing you can do, get my red out here also. All right, so we've got some blue, we've got some red, and we'll dunk again. Get the excess off there, just kind of tapping that on the edge. And if you just very carefully, okay, so I put some blue on. I'm turning it just a little bit and just letting it fall straight above, okay. Okay, going down the side just a little bit on it. Just going basically every other, just the red and blue on there, okay. Oops. You see right there, I have more fly out than I was anticipating. I ended up getting it on the, back on the blue. All right, this last line, let's see how that's going to go. 
All right, so there we've got a striped red and blue. Okay. And then I got to thinking, okay, how can I like just do one color or the other on there? And of course we figured it out with a paintbrush. So dunk a paintbrush in. Oops, I got a little bit stiff from earlier. Um, this was just a soft, not anything special, just a flat, um, I believe it's a sable, but it doesn't, oh, it says Talcon, Taclon, Talcon, I don't a lady ask a question, Diane. Yep. I I make homemade extracts. Could I use them instead of my syrup? I would assume so, yes. Basically anything you want in there just to flavor it up a little bit. And you don't even have to do that. I just thought it sounded like a good idea, just better than plain water. Okay. So, I want to stripe this. Oh, this showed up better earlier when I had some sunlight coming in. Okay, I know you guys can't see this because I can barely see this. I'm just watching where I just painted this on, and I'm trying to go basically about a uh, brush width without anything. And then I'm putting some more on. And, yep, I should be able to get about five of them in there. That's what I figured out earlier. Okay. Then, if we go sprinkle, it is only going to stick where we put that water. Okay? Pretty slick. Then, after I thought up my whole little stripey thing, my brain got to going and I thought, oh, I need to have like, so I can put a couple of those on a skewer, but then I need the top of the flag, so we need one all blue, but then I was like, oh, we need stars. So I have some white star sprinkles here, okay? So we're going to go, oops, let me get my red out of the way here. I could see me spilling that, and we don't need that. All right, so we're going to dunk in. And then, before I put the sugar on, this over here so you guys can see, I'm just going to go through and put some of the stars on. Um, I did test after, I did one of them, um, well, I tried after I put the blue on and the stars would not stick. My guess if you went and used like some piping gel maybe, I feel like possibly they would stick. So is that showing up on camera at all? Can you see that? The stars? No. Okay. Yeah, you can see it, but so, not very so good. So stars are on there. Then we are going to sprinkle the blue on. And put some up here on the top. Okay. Pretty cool. So there we've got our stars. And you might have some of the blue stick on just where, like if I got some of the glue on my glove while I was sticking them on. But you can take a brush later or like I'm doing right now, just take your finger and kind of wipe, wipe the sugar off the top of the stars. But there you have your stars to go with your stripes. Okay. So I have a couple, now these, again, you want to let those set for a little bit, whoops, I toothpicked my glove right into the styrofoam. Um, you want to let them sit and dry a little bit, 
Okay, just for handling so the sugar doesn't all come off. Put this stuff away here. Work on our mess as we go. So I have some that I did earlier. And then I just have a candy stick here. Okay. And one little trick shortening all right when you're putting marshmallows on a stick on one of the paper candy sticks rub just a little bit of shortening on there and your marshmallows will slide on a little bit better for you okay where otherwise they're going to want to stick so to take stripes Another stripes and then there so you've got a fun little marshmallow kebab okay and again this is something quick and simple you could do that with the kids they would have a ball with that okay oh I do want to show you too This is one of them that I did earlier that I did the striping with. Okay. Um, can you zoom in enough so they can see this? I don't know if I'm like super geeked on the whole idea of doing the striping like this because it, it kind of bleeds funny as it dries. You like, got it. Dude, smooth. Keep move, quit moving, Pooh. There we go. Okay. I'm holding still. So there you can see where it's kind of bleeding in there and stuff. So definitely like the solid color ones better, but that's just me. Just wanted to show that to you for, for what that's worth. Okay, so on to our next project. Set those aside. I've got everything about in order here so we can go through stuff without too much messes. I tried to think out the best logical way for to go through everything. All right, so next up, we are going to make some s'mores because who can have a cookout and a festivus without some s'mores. But we're going to use Golden Grahams cereal. Okay. So what I did using my Golden Grahams, I just put it in the food processor. Okay. And you can see I've got some is very powdery and you know some of it's just chunks in there. I just, I need to break it up for the most part. All right. So with that, I have just a couple little slabs of butter in there. Okay. Not a lot, just two little, they're probably teaspoon slabs. So just a couple teaspoon and I've got six marshmallows in there. Okay. This is not any firm, committed recipe by any way, shape, or form, anyone. This was just me thinking, oh, that sounds good. Let's try that. Okay. So I'm going to microwave that. I think it took about 15, 20 seconds last time. Okay. You can stay zoomed down there. That's okay. What? Well, I... <laughs> But I'm just melting the marshmallows and the butter in the microwave real quick. Okay, it's almost done. It is getting puffing up. All right, so it took about 25 seconds in the microwave. All right, we got our butter melted. Basically, just my thought process with all this was kind of work like a Rice Krispie treat. All right. 
There, and then we've got our marshmallow and butter stirred together. Okay. See that all right, hopefully. Okay, and then I'm just going to stir in, I don't know if I need all of it or not. So stir all this together. Oh, that looks good. And this is the one, this was just my random thought of the day. As I was sitting here trying to figure out some new and fun stuff. And it got a way thumbs up from my son. He said that, that was kind of the bomb. Okay, I think I'm going to put just a little bit more in here. And you'll see here in just a second, um, I know probably the typical answer would be, oh my gosh, that's going to be sticky and you can't do anything with it. It really doesn't stick to my gloves or anything. All right. As soon as it starts, it's just got to cool down just, just a smidge. How's that for an official word? Okay. So what I did, there's, there's my mix. Again, it's just some golden graham cereal, crushed it up in the food processor, and then melted some marshmallow and butter essentially to make like a Rice Krispie Treat mix, okay? So, what I did with that, was, my first thought, I made some little balls, because I thought, oh, I'll make like some lollipop type things. But when I put my sticks in them, I totally lost the whole circle thing because the sticks pushing into bigger chunks of cereal and stuff I mean it's still there but but then I got to thinking oh wait if I flatten it out whoops sorry I got a stray marshmallow piece there sticking um if I flatten it out then I can do some stripes or some sprinkles or something fun just to add to it a little bit okay now one thing you don't want to set this down on parchment, okay? It will stick to it. So instead, I have here, um, this is just a plastic Ziploc bag, okay? Nothing special, nothing fancy. But you want to sit on there, okay? And I also don't have to do this, but I took a fondant smoother. You could use the back of a measuring cup, whatever, just something flat. I just pushed it down a little bit more just so both sides were really flat with them. Okay. And then just let them sit and dry. Okay. Here's some that I made a little earlier. But they're stuck on the sticks. They're dry. Because right now you can see that'll still, if I tried dipping this right now, I'd have quite a mess because it's still still will bend around and stuff, okay? Just like your Rice Krispie Treats would, all right? But these, I did these probably two hours ago, I think, maybe. I made these other ones, so. So once you've got that done, then you need some chocolate. I forgot to melt regular chocolate, okay. I will get the regular chocolate going as soon as my hubby grabs me some. Oh wait, I have some dark right here. Okay, I have some dark here. Sorry guys, just a sec. I thought I was so prepared to have all my chocolate melted. But I don't. Well, I could do one. Nah, we'll wait for the chocolate here. It needs dark chocolate. Okay. Next, I want to, well, I'm waiting for that chocolate to melt real quick. Get a couple bags ready here. Because I have 
our other chocolate melted too. And I'm going to want to do some striping. Whoops, I got to put this back in the microwave real quick. Start to set up some. Warm this back up too. So has everyone got fun plans? Are you doing anything fun and exciting for the 4th of July? Or are you hanging at home? My family goes out on, uh, or to my um, brother and sister-in-law's house every year and we have a cookout. And then we can see the fireworks from their place. So we just sit in the yard after we played cornhole and ate all kinds of junk food and stuff for the evening. But then we can sit and watch the fireworks right from their yard. They're a few miles away, but we can still see them pretty good. So that's fun. But that's our annual 4th of July tradition that we do. Hopefully you guys all have something fun you're going to do. Oops. Okay. Actually, while we're waiting for that, I'm going to set these back aside for just a second here. And we can jump in to strawberries. Okay. Show you how to do a few different things with these. Now, one thing um, I honestly have always been a uh, non washer of my berries that I'm going to dip. Okay. And the reason I typically don't wash them is purely because I don't want to worry about seizing up my chocolate with the water. Okay. Um, that said, I just burnt my chocolate. These were insanely sandy and dirty, so I did wash them, but I did it about five hours ago, and I have been drying them off with paper towels every couple hours and stuff, so... Hopefully we don't run into water. But what I usually, I'm going to show you my normal technique. Normally I would just take strawberries and just brush them off, okay, to get any, it'll get the loose seeds. Well, I'm actually still getting some here. I don't know if you can see them on the screen, but um, it'll get your loose seeds off of there, okay. And the reason that I don't typically like washing them, the second, well, you've got the obvious, it might seize with the chocolate, okay? But once you start introducing water onto the berries, it makes them very prone to start the whole leaking process, okay? Where the strawberries themselves will start weeping their own juices out. And we don't want that, okay? So that, basically in a nutshell, those two reasons are why I don't normally wash them, but like I said, this time I did. Now when you're dipping berries, you just want to pull the stems up and just gently hang on to them. I know I have heard of people doing this. You probably, I mean some of you out there may do this. People will take a toothpick and pierce it to hold their berry while they're dipping. I am personally 100% against doing that because along with the whole strawberry juice thing, the second you pierce that berry with your toothpick, that is ba you're giving it an outlet for that juice to start running out, okay? So if I pierce the back end of it with a toothpick to dip it, that's just somewhere where the juice is going to come out even faster, okay? So again, I, I've always just, 
I hang on to the the hole, but you gotta be very gentle with it, okay? And then just dip in, and I do like to roll around to get close, right up to the top of it there. And I don't wanna flick my wrist to shake the excess, all right? I'm kind of moving my whole hand back and forth just to get the excess off. Let it drip for a sec. Um, one thing too, if you put your berries in the refrigerator, which I did not do, um, if you put them in the refrigerator for even probably, you know, 10, 15 minutes before you dip them, the cooler berry will set up quicker. Okay. Now, one of the reasons I just held that up in the air so long, I wanted to get all the excess off and then here, I'll do the next one. I'll face you guys. So you can see here. When you set them down, I don't want a big puddle of chocolate out around where I sit it down, okay? So again, I'm just kind of shaking the excess off and I'm moving my whole arm back and forth rather than just flipping my wrist. So it's a little bit gentler on the hull and not as likely to pull it off there, okay? I just kind of hold it in there for a sec. And then when I set it down, if I start to get a, pool, a little puddle there, I will slide into the puddle. So that way it'll kind of cover it up. All right. And there you can see, we don't, this one over here got a little bit more because it kind of rolled off to the side. But as a general rule, I typically, you know, when I do this, I don't end up getting the great big blotchy puddles of chocolate underneath them. All right. So that's just basic dipping. Now, if you want to do a colored one, you have a couple options, okay? And I didn't even think about this earlier. I should have had a couple of these dipped. I'm sorry. I'm going to pop these up in the freezer real quick just to speed set them. Let me set these up in the freezer just to set them up the rest of the way really quick. And I don't want to leave them up there too long. Or they'll start cracking. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do striping on them. But also, if you want to actually dip, so you can have like one side of the berry blue, one side red, and then have white down the middle. We'll let you see how to do that. Well, I've got those in the freezer. I'm going to go ahead and put some chocolate, put a little bit down in my bag here just to do some striping. No, I'm not. I need my bowl full to, to do the dipping. We'll get our bags ready. And we'll load them here in just a second as soon as I do the dipping. First one is, oh, last two aren't setting up yet. Oh, come on. Well, it's not totally set up, but we're going to work with it. Okay, so if you want to have, like I said, white down the center and then have, you know, red on one side, blue on the other, you have to let your first color set up first. Okay, so we've got the white set up on there. And then we basically just want to hold it as level as you can. Go in and do that side, okay? And just kind of hold it off that way so it doesn't run. You want to keep your straight line that you put on there. All right. There we got that. Now you could stop at this point and just do blue striping on there to get your red, white, and blue, okay? There's always so many options. 
Actually, we'll do the next one. Put this one in the red. So I think we will do one with the striping on it. Okay. And now the other, if you want your stripes horizontal, okay, what you have to do um, with the, you would need to leave your white at the top, okay? You technically could do dip your whole thing in red first and then do white just part of the way up and then do your blue if you wanted red, white, and blue, okay? Um, the only thing to cover the red with the white for that middle stripe, you would have to dip it a couple times for that, okay? So if we go this route, do you have any questions? Or? No. Oh, okay. They like my, I had my shoe off. They like my sock on the floor. Why would they have seen your sock on the floor? The bottom of the picture showed it right there. Damn. <laughs> Busted. This is why I don't let them out much, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna let that set up. All right, so let's take our first one. Let's see. Let's start to set up. All right, we'll go ahead and dip. Turn that this way. All right, so we've got our blue next. And I'm gonna kind of crisscross it. So we'll get a little bit in the red. We'll have all the colors on there. All righty. So there we go. You've got red, white, and blue on there. And then, I know this isn't set up all the way. We're just going to go ahead and do it. striping in that direction okay so there's a couple options on that and then make sure I got everything that I wanted to do with bull dunking yes I did okay so now I'm just gonna pour a little bit of this into my tipless bags here and then tie that off so it doesn't leak out the other end. There's some blue. And let's put some red in another bag. There we go. Now, if you've never done striping, a um, couple things to keep in mind. You want a smaller, really fine hole, okay? Probably one of the first, I guess, common things I see people will try and stripe from a spoon, okay? And really, you're, you're gonna end up getting a lot of more glob, clumpy looking, okay? Even if you only have Ziploc bags, it's worth it just to put it in a bag so you can at least control a little bit what you're doing with the striping, okay? Right, set that on the thing once so you guys can see here. There we go. Put these over here. Off to the side. There, nobody wants to see the messy one. Great. Okay, so if we take our blue one here, and as I said, you just want a very, very tiny hole for striping. All right, 
And when you do striping, you want to start, I'll face it towards you guys. Don't try and control it right on top of where you're working, okay? If you sit here and do this, um, well, if you try and do a pattern, that's fine, but you're going to end up with these big kind of globs at the end where you stop and go back, okay? So what you want to do, like if I were going to stripe all of these, I would set them all out. So here, we'll just pretend that these are all dipped. I'd have them set up like this. Okay, start past the edge of where you want, and you just want to work fast and go back and forth, okay? So that way you get nice even stripes on the whole thing. You don't end up with the, with the clumps at the end where you tried, here, I'll show you on a berry, all right? So if you try just controlling your striping and where you're just staying on the berry here itself, you're going to end up, well, A, you're not going to have your lines as straight either, but you're going to have a lot of these, um, let me see off to the side, your clumps and stuff at the end of your rows, okay? And again, we were just pretending that these were. And then the other thing you can do, of course, always popular, is add a second color of striping. Now it's not going to show up so well on here. But if you go in the opposite direction, that just looks pretty cool, okay? So if you had two, you know, if you're doing these for a wedding or something, if you dipped in white chocolate and then had two wedding colors and just did opposite striping like that, that looks pretty neat, okay? So there are strawberries. Any questions on that? Hopefully I explained that good enough for you. Okay. So now back to push those forward just a little bit more. This is one of our graham cracker treat creations I came up with. Okay, and this is one that I did a lot earlier, so it's dried and solid on there. <laughs> you ain't getting none, mister. Oh my gosh, that's a good idea. I know, right? Okay, so now you've got your chocolate, your graham, and your marshmallow. So you got a s'more on a stick. And if you want to make it very festive for the fourth. If you want to add sprinkles, you want to do this while oops. Well here. We're gonna have to dunk another one. I didn't get this open. My bad. Um, anything that you want to stick on it. Actually, I'll do something else with the other one here. I just thought something else I can show you, too. Uh, love. Um, okay. Anything, if you want to stick it, you, uh, like if you want to put sprinkles on anything that you're dipping with chocolate, you need to do that right after you dip it. Okay? So that way you've got the wet chocolate. Oops. Okay. So, we'll dump another one in here real quick, and shaking off my excess, and this I can be a little more uh, shaken wispy with, because it's on the stick solid, okay? I know with our strawberries, I had to be a little more gentle. Dump some out here, it's a little combination of them. on both sides and uh, let's see what we got here oh, I got some white non -parels. Let's see if I can control from getting too many on here 
There we go. Oops. Trying to keep it towards you guys a little bit. So there, we got some red, white, and blue. And then that will dry with those hanging out on there. Okay. Now, the one that I just did a minute ago, actually, go take, oh, is this really setting up already? Oh my gosh. Take up my chocolate, sorry, setting up in there. So let me get that out. There we go. Okay. Oops. I think I busted, the, I did, I busted a great big old hole in my bag. That's okay. So, so I want to strike this. Then, I'm going to sprinkle. Ah, my chocolate hadn't quite set up enough. Okay. If my chocolate was completely set up before I did that, when I striped it, then the sprinkles are only going to stick where I striped it, okay? Which is what I'm, you can see for the most part what that does. But that way you can see the red and blue, or red and white in there. And then you could still stripe it again. But my chocolate is all hardening up on me. I'll put this back in the microwave. Okay? There. those. All right, next up, kind of along the same lines here. So, Just gonna try and slide some stuff aside here. Bring the next one down. Okay. So I made a tray of brownies. But I put them in a lot bigger pan than I normally would. Okay. So I did a 10 inch instead of an eight inch square. So they were a lot thinner. And then once I have it thinner, I can go in with my cookie cutter, cut those out, all right? And then we just wanna pop that out of there. And hopefully you didn't over bake your brownies, which I did not. brownies are nice and moist then you can just insert your stick in there okay so you've got some brownie pops <laughs> oh you silly boy you think you're getting some warm the chocolate back up here real quick and now if your brownies are not real, like mine are like really, really moist in there. So the sticks are gonna stay put okay. Um, what you could do also, let me cut another one. If they're just acting a little off and you're, if you're a little bit worried about it, no problem. Take one of your sticks Go in and do what I call a pre-drill, okay? Uh, let me see if I can get any chocolate out of either of these bags. I don't think I can. Oh, okay, totally broke my bag open, but um, normally I would use the same color chocolate that I'm dipping, but get it down in there. There we go, okay. So I squirted some chocolate down inside the hole. And then put your stick in. Okay. 
and essentially what you're doing then you just want to let that set up um, you can pop them in the freezer if you want for a couple minutes but what you're doing if you just take you know if this was your cut brownie and you took a stick put some chocolate on your stick and you just push it in you see where all no you don't see because I did it with brown chocolate with a brown brownie so here let me do that again with the white chocolate all right so I dumped my stick and some chocolate okay and if you push it down in where's all your chocolate now you can see it is all up on top of your brownie okay so there's nothing inside holding it on there so what I really recommend and this with cake pops, with anything like this. Um, also, if you're using, you can take your brownie scraps. After we do this, and that was gonna be my next thing too. Don't throw them away. But there, you can make some brownie pops, okay? But if you make cake pops, brownie pops, whatever, pre-drill your hole, and then Go back with the bag because it is about impossible to get in there without a bag. Let's snip a little bit up there. Okay, so here we have our pre-drilled hole. Put my bag down in. And now I just filled that hole up with chocolate. So when I push my stick in, there's actually chocolate down inside of that to adhere the stick inside the brownie, okay? Then it will stay put. Again, that same thing with your cake pops. Yeah, it's kind of already setting up. I normally would let those set for um, probably at least five minutes anyways. Just to make sure that's set up really well inside there. Okay. Oops. Big drip. Now oh, I got one more big drip coming. See what I get for trying to rush for you guys. I'm put some more sprinkles on. Okay. But there you got brownie pop. Okay. Set that over there in my styrofoam okay so with our shaped ones essentially you got the same thing going oh dear it's moving more so you can see them okay i'm gonna dip this one in the white chocolate and my guess is going to be that this will need a double dunk okay just so you don't see the chocolate through it and I'd say I'm definitely, that's looking right on here. So I'm going to set this up in the freezer real quick. Okay. okay let me get these out of the way. And then I gotta put my red and blue back in the microwave for our final project. I'm trying to squirt all my cold chocolate that's set up out of the bags. And if you have them do this, um, you potentially could keep those warm with a heating pad, okay? And you could very carefully put them back inside the microwave. That is not really my recommendation. 
recommendation, but you could do it. Just if you do some, if you do ever put a bag with chocolate in the microwave or even any of the little um, bottles, okay, be very careful because you're going to get hot spots when you do that. Just be sure to shake everything up really well and keep a close eye on it. Okay. We are all melted. Yes, we are. All right, let me check my star up here. Oh no, it stuck to my thing. All right, we're gonna do another one because the one that is just stuck in the freezer, I put it on a board. Just a board, not a parchment. I was just trying to be fast because I looked at the clock and saw what time it was. So we'll do another one just with a single dip. And again, this really is just same, same theory. If you want, you know, whatever you want on it for sprinkles. Where am I? Oops. The lovely messes of chocolate. All right, we've got some blue. There, let's try to keep them off to one side. Mission accomplished pretty well. Actually, I'm gonna put some more right on. There we go. Pretty cool. So brownie pop, okay. In there, I know it's gonna drip a little bit more. That's okay. Alright. Then the last one I wanted to show you. I went and bought a sheet of Rice Krispie treats. Okay. Just because I want to give you some different options. You don't have to sit here and make stuff. You can you can go buy and alter. All right, the Rice Krispie Treats, when you get them, I actually, I sent the sheet of them home with my son already, so. But I wanna show you, I took my rolling pin and flattened it out a little bit, all right? Reason being, it when it comes, it's as thick as this cookie cutter, and I, real, I, I like it a little more compressed, okay? You don't have to do that, but I just do, but either way, I'm just using my cookie cutter to go in and cut that. Yes, I threw away the straps, it's okay. All right, and now we're all gonna cross our fingers together because I'm a little worried about this whole little skinny neck right there, but we're gonna see how this rolls. All right, so I want to do just the star in blue. Yeah, it's already wanting to fall. Go oh, darn it. Now I'm just using the spoon on this, obviously. You can see that. Um, you could put some chocolate in a bottle and squeeze over. The edge here. Uh, you could set it on a cookie drying rack if you wanted. Down goes the board. Okay, set that right there. I'm going to pop this in the freezer for just a quick minute. Somebody had a good idea to make cake like Rice Krispie balls out of the scraps. Yeah, she took. Anything I'm throwing away, you absolutely can do the scraps with. The mister and I are back on the, on the no-carb thing, so I'm throwing scraps away to resist temptation. 
And as soon as we're done here, even though he's been sitting here making little ooh and ah noises, all this stuff's getting thrown away so he doesn't grab one and eat it. <laughs> Ooh. Or I'll get him out of here real quick. I'm going to tell you what, that s'more thing looks awesome. The s'more thing, that's the one that Eric <laughs> tried and he said it was amazing. Man, because I don't so. like cooking the marshmallow. <laughs> yeah, nobody likes roasting the marshmallows. I actually enjoy roasting the marshmallows, but I know a lot of people do not enjoy roasting the marshmallows. Okay, while that is in the freezer, I'm going to put some red chocolate back in the bag here for what I'm going to do with the other part of it. Sorry. I love working with the stuff, but it is indeed quite the mess at times. Okay. So there. I'm going to set this up here instead of on my cold silver table. help with the breakage thing. Let's see. All right, we might be okay here. So now I want to do the same thing with white down here at the other end on the little, uh, I guess you, the spray out area of it. I'm not sure what exactly you call it. I'm sure there's a technical name for it. And hopefully this chocolate will help hold that weak spot. Got just a little bit, I know you guys can't see that side, but. Okay. So now I'll set that down. I don't want to keep working it around with my hand. Because of that weak spot, I want it to hopefully set up where it's solid. Okay, while that white is still wet, I'm going to take my red in the bag here. And small lines here. And we'll see how straight I can do this. Not very. Oh well. We're gonna blame it on Rice Krispies not being even, right? Oh well, it looks kind of wavy now. And I'm gonna take my toothpick. I'm just gonna smooth that area where there's a whole bunch of it right there. Okay. So there. Now normally, I would put that in the freezer, which I will do after I bid you all a wonderful evening. Okay. Um. Thank you so much for joining me. I will, as always, I'll take some nicer photos of everything after it sets up and put them on our Facebook page so you can see some close-up shots. If you have any other questions, please feel free, give me a holler or put a message on there. I do go through after I get home and read back through comments and see if there's any questions that we missed while we were filming, okay? But again, thank you so much for joining me. Um, next week, unless I have a change of plans, I believe I'm going to do a cookie bouquet because we haven't done anything with that yet. So, um, also, if you have any suggestions or requests for upcoming classes, what you want to see on our Tuesday evening ventures, please feel free to put comments out there. Um, I want to be doing what you guys want to see, obviously. So, if you have requests or something that you want to see that we haven't done yet, let me know. But again, thanks so much for joining us, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.